Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, an amazing data project run by the R for Data Science online learning community. Every week they release a new data set, and let's see what they have this week. This week we have The Office. So, <laughs> I hadn't seen this sticker before. Is that an R package, Shroot? Huh. So it looks like Shroot R package and ratings of each episode. Ah, this is going to be great. Okay. Uh, we're going to install the Shroot package. Ooh, and the tidy text package that's um, uh, developed by me and by Julia Silgi and the tidy text mining uh, with our book. That's cool to have a, an advertisement for, for it. And uh, let's see. All right, then we're going to get the data and the Shroot package. Oh, this, let's see. So I'm going to start by installing the Shroot package. Let's see. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to see what's in that package. What is there? Shroot is the name of a, if you don't watch The Office, I'm a big fan of The Office, so I really, I'm really excited about this. Uh, Shroot, there's a data set called The Office. All right, as table of The Office. I'm gonna do library tidyverse. As table, okay, we have, ooh, wow, well, man, this is really cool. We have index, season, episode, episode name, the writer, the character, the text, and the text with there's directions, things like on the phone and such. All right. And we also have the ratings. Okay. So we have the, we have, let me see, I'm going to say transcripts and ratings. Uh, office transcripts, office ratings. All right, let's see what we have. So first of all, I'm gonna start with the, the ratings before we move on to text data. Uh, this is, um, let's see, yeah. So uh, the, uh, the, generally I would wanna start with something like ratings because um, you don't wanna start pulling apart words till you've looked at uh, this data set. Is that there are 188 episodes across, if I recall correctly, nine seasons. So like the easiest thing we can do is summarize things like what's the average rating? on IMDB. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's been going, it goes sort of down over time. Um, I, 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 I'm a, as I said, I'm a fan of the show. I would more or less agree that the, the eighth season was probably the worst. That was the first one after um, uh, Steve Carell left and uh, bounced back a little in the ninth season. Uh, the sixth season was also a low, was also a weak season. Um, but yeah, generally you have your Corel years. Yeah, this, um, I'm going to uh, clean this up a little bit. Stay LX continuous. Breaks are 1 to 9. I want to keep all 9 seasons. Uh, and yeah, basically peak around the 4th, the 3rd, 4th season. I actually love the 2nd season. Uh, all that makes sense to me. Um, but we don't just want to look at, uh, maybe we don't just want to look by uh, at season um, averages. Maybe we look at, want to look across all episodes. So maybe what I'll do is say this. I'll do, um, I'll, you, I'll, I'll just say season, let me see, I'll do this. I'll say season episode is paste season and episode, and I'll do FCT reorder. Now, I, I want to basically have this, I want to have the season and episode put together. Let me see. Now, nah, here's how I'm going to actually do it. I'm going to take the episodes... I'm going to say title is FCT reorder. I'm going to reorder the title based on the season plus some tiny number times the episode. Why do I do that? To make sure that they're ordered in the correct order. And what am I doing? I could have just done FCT in order of title. That's a good trick. Because then I can say, let's do the title by the, the um, IMDb rating as a bar plot. Now, it's going to be too crowded. Uh, and you know, definitely way too crowded right there. Uh, if I do a theme, it's this is still not going to be amazing, but I'm going to do a theme axis text X, um, and let's see, element text 
angle equals 90, h just equals 1. This is how I rotate tax by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Still way too crowded. Um, what I think I'm going to do is try doing this as, let's see. I'm just saying there are a few ways that I can try and, um, yeah, this is not going to, Nothing that includes text is going to work. No matter how much I zoom in, there's 188 episodes. That's just too many. Uh, but I, maybe I can do a... Let's see. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... It's a little silly, but I'm going to actually just try element blank. Now they're all like this. And I'm going to throw in a fill equals factor of season. These are all the seasons. You know, I don't like a column because the lowest rating we have is like a, what is that, a six point something? So what I'm going to do instead is do a, a line plot. But that means the fill is not going to work on a line plot. But you know what is, is maybe I throw in on top of it a color, a point with a color. Color equals factor season. Oops. Uh, and here I have a line plot. Oh yeah, we want to group equals one to get one continuous line across them. Here we go. And the last, what do we see? A couple things we see here. One is that the last few episodes have a higher rating. Uh, but I'd really like to know this. I've got some guesses just because I'm a fan of The Office. Uh, this looks like it's season seven. I bet this is the last episode Michael Scott was in. There are a few other good episodes from, from that season. Uh, generally, Goodbye Michael is probably this episode. What is this? This is season four, and then I think this is season five. I don't know what, what episode this is in the middle of season five. There were, I think, a few. There was that Super Bowl one. Well, you know how I'm going to know which is which? I have a couple options. I'm going to start, actually, with... Uh, a geom um, with a geom text, but really importantly, it's not going to work unless I don't have over to add text to every single one of these. But I want to know for the really extreme ones what it is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say label equals the title, but check overlap equals true. Can I zoom out a little? Yeah, that's going to be better. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, the Banker was a clip show episode, so that makes sense that it would be the lowest rated show. Uh, I barely, was this, the, I don't know, this season eight was kind of lame. I don't remember what was, uh, what was going on here. Uh, this, these episodes, yeah, it was some, there were some pretty lame episodes around there. Uh, finale, uh, yes, the last couple episodes go up a lot. Yep, so Garage Sales, the episode where Michael gets engaged, uh, stress relief, yes. I th stress relief. No, nah, no, nah, was that the... Ah, I'm going to stop trying to test my whatever. This is a season three finale, season two finale. Um, I think this one won some some Emmys. Uh, yeah, okay, so one thing, we're, one thing we're getting here is like... Yeah, actually, a lot of this lines up to like my recollection of, of watching some of these, some episodes that were particularly funny or particularly low-rated... But yeah, all right, so this is, um, last thing I'm going to do is throw into the text and H just, you know, not the last thing I'm going to do. I'm also going to do theme, set, theme, light. I'm not crazy about the gray theme. That's pretty good. I'm also, hmm, I also don't really like the, um, all the lines, uh, these, like, uh, vertical lines are making it look really crowded. So I'm also going to add panel, grid, major x element blank and I'll throw in a panel grid minor x do I I don't because um when there's a factor I don't need it all right that's actually pretty good um and I don't think I need a legend on this one but I am going to throw in actually geom point one thing we don't consider is the is the number of um total votes so what I'm going to do is say, here's my total, oh, um, size equals total votes. I don't think I actually need a legend on this one. I'm going to throw in a legend position equals none. 
looks a little bit better. Now notice I did the H just, yeah. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Because uh, our eyes get drawn to the right uh, spots here. Uh, it's a shame that some spikes would have text that overlap with others. Not a lot. We, we could have done a geome text repel. Let's actually give that one shot. I'm going to change this to a geome text repel. I'm actually going to comment this line. Well, this is going to look, oh, looks terrible, truly terrible. Now, I could add a, for, a small, make the force fa uh, factor smaller that causes them to repel each other less. Nah, nah, just way too much text. But what I actually like about the uh, this is that if you're an Office fan, you can kind of fill in the blanks yourself. Uh, like you start to feel like, oh, this is when this happened, this is when this happened. So it's really not, it's really still pretty reasonable. Uh, okay. And, yep, this is the two part where Jim and Pam get married. Lots, lots of cool things to say. Uh, the, um, the clip show. Clip show for people that don't know from TV is when an episode mostly consists of clips of previous episodes. Like I kind of... They're generally very unpopular among people that are fans of TV. Uh, and, um, okay. All right. So generally we see, yeah, is there's, um, actually, I'm going to add one more thing. What am I going to add? I'm going to add a geom smooth. No, not a, not a linear smooth. What was the general path across these? Oh, hmm. Uh, I need to teach it that the geom, it's not enjoying this geom smooth because it's on a factor. Yeah, I don't, hmm. I'm going to give this one try. X equals as integer. Oh, what if I just did this? Couldn't have just done overall episode number, like a regular person. Why did I need this whole title thing? What am I doing? What am I doing here? Regular person. Uh, so let's say episode number equals row number. Here we go. I don't necessarily need to remove the text anymore. There it is. And now I can probably get rid of these. Yeah, okay. That's better. All right. There's a lot I like about this. It shows the general shape. Uh, the pilot is less popular in general, um, but uh, yeah, it shows the general shape that goes across these. All right. All right, so that's popularity of the office over time. I'm going to clean this up with a couple of things. I'm going to say X is episode number, Y is IMDB rating. Uh, let's see, title is off popularity of the office episodes over time subtitle color represents season size represents a uh, number of ratings so that actually why why is the number of ratings relevant uh one is it's a it's a rough um measure of like popularity we can see that that they're less and less watched over here but another really is that like you can say okay maybe there's a lot of noise but not a lot of people were rating them all right uh, that's say uh, over in this area. Okay, this looks pretty good. Uh, last thing is, I probably want to read the this side of the screen. I'm gonna throw in. I'm gonna throw in expand limits x equals negative five. Not because there are negative five episodes. Negative ten. I don't want to see it. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it's pretty good. And now we can read across all the episode titles. All right. Uh, that's popularity of the office over time. 
So uh, I could also have, have looked at it uh, as what are the most popular episodes. I could have said arrange by descending IMDb rating. And I could have said, uh, well, I probably would have wanted to combine these together. So if I want to say something like title is paste season dot episode space, just thinking of what will make this a little bit more readable. And look at the top 20. This is the, because I could have said what are the most, the 20 most popular episodes. I am to be rating Geom uh, call cohort flip. I neglected one step here. I want to say title is FCP reorder title by the IMDb rating. You know, here, look at, look at me. I did it again. I did a geom call when I really want a geom point. Uh, something's up here. Hmm. It's perfectly tied. It's a little weird. I, I don't know. I guess they're always given in like in 0 0.05 increments. Yes, they are always given in 0 0.05 increments. So that's something we learned here. Season and throw in a color equals season. Most, yes, okay, they're, they're in 0 .05, 0 0.05, 0 0.1. They're all in 0 .5, uh, 0.1 uh, increments. Uh, episodes of the, of, of the office. All right, so I don't think I agree with some of these. I think the, the there's a lot of nostalgia that goes into the last couple episodes. I don't think they are up there with the, with the earlier seasons or anything. I think they're being compared to sort of the rest of the season. Um, but yeah, a lot of these are, are very, yeah, pretty sure Stress Relief is the, um, the Super Bowl episode in season five. Yeah, uh, I have a good memory for TV. Uh, it's not just The Office. Uh, but let's see, all right, so yeah, and then you have, Next. So yeah, these are some like classic episodes, season three finale, the season two finale, episode where Michael gets engaged. Uh, I'm a big fan of this episode. Um, really big fan of this episode. Uh, yeah, so these are like are some of the the most popular episodes of The Office. I could have also said size is uh, num rate. What is it? Num ratings. What was it? Ratings. Ratings. To total votes. Yeah, you know, this is fine. This is fine. Yeah, so we see like, okay, some of them didn't get a lot of ratings individually. All right, uh, I kind of like this. I like this graph a lot more. I'm glad I started with this one. If I want just one graph out of this plot, out of this data set, this would be the one that I would do. Okay, so that was on the office ratings by themselves. Now we can start saying, hmm. I'm thinking about a few ways, a few things we could do. Let's bring in transcript, uh, the transcripts. All right, so we have office transcripts. These ones look a little different. One thing is I'm gonna wanna clean this up right away. Parse number of season. Parse number comes from radar. Does as integer work when it's a, um, does this work? Does as integer work if there's zeros in there? Let's find out the hard way. Yeah, it works fine. Okay, uh, so we have an index, a um, season episode. I just want to clean that so that I could join it together. I could have joined another title too. All right, so some of the things we could find, we could say are what are characters that lead to better episodes, worse episodes. We have to control for the confounding factor of the, uh, in terms of better or worse in terms of the ratings. Uh, but we're going to get to that in, in, in a minute. In the meantime, uh, let's look at, so we're actually going to put that parsing up here along with making it a table. Let's look at words. Okay, if you haven't used the tidy text package before, uh, created by myself and Julia Silgi, you can, you, it works based on the unnest tokens. I say, I wanna split this into this text column into words. I'm gonna remove the text with direction uh, for this analysis. All right, all right, Jim, your quarter looks, vi quarters look, uh, look very good. How are you? Okay. The idea is that we split into one line for each uh, word. Your quarterlies look very good. How are things in the library? Oh, I told you, couldn't close it. So you come to the Master of Guidance. Is this, yeah. So these are first, that's the first lines of the first episode. Um, can you imagine if we just read through it for the rest of the screencast? 
Uh, yeah, probably not supposed to, that would probably not be fair use. Uh, all right, so one thing I could say is, what are the most common words? So I'll call this, well, first we call this transcript words. And now I'll say, what are the most common words? Love count. I'll count all day. And I also love anti joining with our set of stop words that comes with tidy text. Yeah, hey, Michael. Uh, so I'm actually going to filter out a few additional stop words. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, Michael. Uh, so I'm going to actually say, um, yeah, hey. This is just for, like, because I don't want things these to show up. Gonna... Not completely crazy about about uh, those words popping up here. I could keep going, but whatever. Um, I'm just gonna say filter word not word in blacklist. Here we go. And now, um, and now we have we removed some common stop words, uh, and we have names, of course. We have a, a couple other uh, common ones. If I just, uh, I'm not gonna create a bar plot. I absolutely I could create a bar plot, uh, but yeah, the idea is like. Things that aren't quite stop words. Oh, sorry, sorry. Things, yeah, things that aren't quite stop words, but like, uh, just really, but are really common things that could pop up in a modern sitcom. All right. So we show our um our words, uh words. Uh, but I'm actually going to do the anti join and the filter up here. I'm gonna. That is to say, I'm gonna keep our transcript words right like this. Okay. And now I'm gonna say. Transcript words. All right. Here's something I'm curious about. How much does each character say each word? Uh-oh. Some characters have a little bit of funky parsing. Uh, I really should have actually, before I did anything, uh, here's the thing I, I hadn't thought of. I should have taken this, counted the character. These are the major cast of the office. I'm going to scroll down and look for, are there weird cases? Any weird cases? There's going to be some quote uh, situations. Now, they don't actually matter. Wait. Hmm. Well, here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try taking this and saying you take character equals a string, remove all character, remove all the quotes. From that, just in case those are, are parsed incorrectly. Rerun this. Yeah. So notice these aren't important characters; they're the ones that start alphabetically. I just happened to notice the um, the quotes, and it was annoying me a little bit. All right. So counting character and word. I'm not going to do this quite yet. What I'm first going to do is take my words. Here we go. Uh, index is going to be one per line. Okay, yeah. So like office transfers as an index is one per line, not one per episode. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is actually say uh, group by character num lines. No, I'm going to do it up here now that I think of it. Am I? Yeah, I am. I'm going to add count the character. I'm going to move all characters. Add count adds an N that shows the number of times a character speaks. Michael Spee has 10, th almost 11,000 lines across all the episodes. Jim has 6,300. I only want characters that have at least 10 lines total. Uh, all right, so I think that at least 10 is a good start. Uh, how many characters does that leave? I'm now going to count a character. 178? That's too many. Do I want to do ones that are in at least two episodes or something? I think that I do. I'm going to say you must have at least 10 lines. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to say n must be greater than this, than 10. 10 lines? n distinct, I'm just doing some arbitrary things. n distinct title is greater than 1. You must be in at least, let's make it two. I don't know who Abby is. I'm not trying to just remove Abby. I'm just trying to like make this a little more, a little bit more reasonable. Uh, character. I'm doing something wrong. And this group by character. Oops! Look at me go. What am I doing? And distinct. Oh, it's not. It's not called title. It's called episode name. Cool. 
All right, so there are 81 characters. Here's how many lines they have. Some of them aren't meaningful, like waitress, crowd, woman, everybody. Those aren't meaningful characters. Both uh, those are like uh, kind of generic terms. Um, but yeah, so much so. What if I said you must have Bob Vance? Want to keep Bob Vance? All right. This is now called the Bob Vance cutoff. You must have at least 30 lines. All right. I was just messing around a little bit there. We can always change the filters later. But uh, mostly we want to keep, we, we know we're going to keep this, this main cast, Michael Dwight, Jim, Andy, Pam, etc. Um, all right, so these, so why have I been doing this? Well, one thing I want to know is, are there words that are specific to particular characters? Uh, I bet Dwight says Michael a lot. I said, bet Jim and Michael say Dwight a lot. So a lot of them are going to be names of other characters. We might at some point want to remove those. Actually, probably I'm going to. But how am I going to find this out? What I do is bind TFIDF. TFIDF is term frequency times inverse document frequency. That's going to be taking, um, seeing what words are common for particular people that are uncommon across characters. Uh, I'm going to treat each word, oh, I'm going to have to count word and character first. And then I'm going to say by TFIDF word and character and, uh, oh, and N. And now we say, uh, and now I can arrange what words are most specific to which characters. The group says Shaboya. Shabuya. Is that like, I don't know, is that a chant? I guess so. So that's charming. <laughs> but it's not, <laughs> but it's kind of weird. Uh, every, uh, yeah, so the idea is we have here is things that everyone says all at the same time. Uh, everyone and all are a little bit weird. I'm going to say um, blacklist characters, everyone, all, both, guy, girl. Those are not characters. Oh, group and group. And I also I need to remove, do the filter here. Didn't I, didn't I do this? What did I do? There it goes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Val's a character, and I guess talks about someone named Brandon and so on. Uh, character in season eight, I think. Mm. Uh, all right. So what we see then are, are words that maybe some only one person says is, is a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of these. All right, but what if I... I might also want to keep only words that are a certain amount of frequency. Uh, so maybe I say add count to word filter n greater than, I don't know, must have 20 uses overall, for example. All right, so now we have like, Hank uses the word chairs and copier three times. Helen uses lice. We have, we have kind of plot specific things. Uh, and um, plot specific, character specific things. Honestly, we should only keep char characters that have more than some number of lines. Uh, yeah, trying to, I try to get it to like a core set of characters. Uh, how many characters do we have now? Otherwise, you get characters that appear as like in one or two, one, and like have little episodes, have like one or one plot line of the words that are specific to those plot lines. Yeah. Uh, it would be hard to argue there are more than 30 characters. Mm, there's, yeah, okay. Uh, we have like, all right, David Wallace is now the cutoff, not Bob Vance. Um, and this is the number of words each of them has said. Uh... Okay, and uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, nan, na, Robert often says California, often says Andrew, I don't know. Joe talks about printers. Daryl talks about, says Mike a lot, and says Michael. He's, I would have expected it to be uh, Dwight saying Michael a lot, but that's interesting. All right, so then we can say, what is specific to one character? I could say, for example, I want to know all about Dwight. What is Dwight's what is Dwight's thing? Oops, uh, not looking for the count. I'm looking for the this is the character TFIDF. It's only common words, common characters. Character equals Dwight. He probably says barn or farm a lot, but oh yep, he says he, he refers to his own name, Shroot. 
Moe's, he mentioned a lot, his cousin. Farm is up there. Beat is up there. Idiot is up there. Oh, man. I don't know if you're not a fan of um of The Office. I don't know if this is is this uh, is fun for you at all, but it's really fun for me. Uh, so we can say then, here's uh, this specific uh, character's uh, signature. Reorder word tf idf. How's that look? I need a coward flip. Dwight Trout, Mose, Michael, Assistant, Ha, La, Hey, Farm, Idiot, War. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the idea is like I don't know what the what I don't know what, the, what pum is. What is pum? What is what is what even is that? It's sometimes worth looking back at this. this Same people were filter string detect text pum. Pum, 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 presumably. I'm gonna actually say pum with a space after it. Oh, uh, uh, okay. It's singing, <laughs> okay. So one of the problems we have here is someone uses the same, like this is just, uh, this is singing a uh, little drummer boy in one episode. Uh, we could distinguish it across some, um, I don't know. It just is, it, it's, it's not a big, um, uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, all right. And that's some things we see. This is some characters and their um, uh, things they say. Let's, 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 let's actually look at a couple of characters. Let's look at Dwight, Jim, Michael. Who are the characters I like? I like Holly. I like uh, Daryl. Uh, let's see, and the um, but let's we have to facet wrap by character like Creed. I like uh, scales equals free. This is not gonna work yet. Uh, oh, not head 20. Instead, I need a group by character top n 20 tfidf. I need to look at the top. Oops, this is not gonna work. Ungroup. Last thing we need is a reorder within. So I'm going to say a reorder within, which comes from tidy text, and we say reorder the words within characters. Oh, and I need to add something to that. Uh, notice this is to ensure that I can order within each of these facets. So if I didn't, um, Susan didn't notice, if I just had reorder, they're order, the words are now ordered overall, but because the orders are different between each of these, they all end up in kind of different orders. Reorder within fixes that problem, but it requires a step where I say scale, I want to say X reordered. Yeah, that's the one. And I'm going to switch this to only have 10 from each. Okay. Oh, look at me. I, how far am I in? I'm almost 40 minutes in and I hadn't saved yet. Uh, isn't that charming? Uh, so what I'm going to, what is this? This is office transcripts. Uh, so what we see is that Michael talks about Jan a lot. This is not the words they use the most. This is the ones that are most specific to that character. Wimboe is, I guess, a song, like a, like a line, like a, a Wimboe. Okay, this is uh, the Lion Sleeps Tonight song. Yeah. All right. And um, uh, which he and Andy sing at, at some point in a car. And uh, Dale says, uh, and Val is a love interest in later seasons. Uh, yeah, lots of like sound kind of things pop up that one person might do a couple times. I'm wondering if we should say distinct, don't count the same word multiple times in the same line. That would help a little. I don't know. Um, I don't have I don't have the strongest sense here. Uh, CC is Jim's daughter, uh, and uh, Karen is love interest. He calls uh, he he often calls um, his own uh, uh, wife uh, Bees uh, it was Pam Beasley Beasley. All right, that's cool. Um, assistant region. So so there's a running gag where Dwight will, will call himself the assistant regional manager. Jim will say assistant to the regional manager. Excuse me, he says assistant so often. Uh, all right, this is pretty fun. This is really cool. Can we add any characters? Want to add Jen? Want to add, is Holly in the, does Holly hit this uh, threshold? 
Holly is Michael's love interest. Uh, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. Here are a whole bunch of things that we can uh, see. A lot of the time is characters. We could have removed the character names. So these are signatures of character. Uh, so I add some things here. Uh, TF, IDF of character of I could add more text, but the idea is that these are signatures that are specific to each character. I think this is fun. I'm going to make one change here. I'm not going to keep this this axis free because, like, notice Daryl has some words that are very specific to him. Others don't have words that are as specific to them, and that is kind of worth no noting. What if I replaced, so like, Michael doesn't have a lot that's specific to him. What if I replaced him with David Wallace? David Wallace is definitely going to have Mike, David Wallace as his boss. What if, if um, I expected Michael? No, yeah. Uh, right. He has a product in later seasons called Suck It. That's why the word suck appears here. Oh, man, I have a lot of office knowledge rattling around in my head that I did not realize I did. All right. So that's uh, some things about uh, just uh, text analysis. Now I want to combine the two data sets. I want to combine text and uh and episodes. I don't actually want to use text prediction to, to, to predict the rating of an episode. Why don't I? Uh, because I'm, I th I'm skeptical that, oh yeah, if an episode uses the word, uh, use a particular word a lot, it's going to be unusually popular. Uh, that doesn't feel plausible to me. Uh, it feels more plausible that it'll be confounded either with which characters are speaking and which characters are popular or with time. So that's why I'm going to want uh, I'm actually going to want to to instead estimate what um what character so here's we're going to here's we're going to try and estimate him. machine learning what uh what affects popularity of an episode is mean uh the season or position or the um time or time etc there's the season there's the director there's the writer. Notice what we actually have in this office ratings data set. Wait, nope, it's not an office. It's office transcripts, which is not exactly right. The, uh, we have director, we have writer, and lines per character is going to be the remaining one. Uh, so I'm actually gonna, I'm really kind of interested. We'll say office transcripts, and we'll say count um, episode name character. Uh, right? So I'll say, oh man, this is annoying. I think that they were split up in the other one. I wonder if I did an anti-join. If I do a distinct episode name, and I do an anti-join, what is annoying? I'll tell you what's annoying. Uh, by episode name equals title. Some of them are not going to line up. A lot of them don't. Oh, we have we use some, 26 don't line up. Uh, thinking about how to um, get, how does this not line up to, to that? Uh, office transcripts, are they just, are they different spelled? Like, even episode, like, get the girl, like, episode name, or, okay, I see. Some of them just like, this one has a dot, this one doesn't have a dot. Don't love that. Uh, okay. Here's oh okay I've I've got a guess here let's see something um, distinct see I think I might be better to use episode numbers but maybe not not if part one and two okay no we're gonna use episode numbers it's just gonna be a little bit less messy even though here the part twos we it ends up the rating of part two don't end up uh. Uh, don't end up included. Um, all right, I think that that's pretty reasonable. Uh, what I'm going to do is then say, are there any that do not have season episode um, pairings? Season. Here, I'm, I'm just trying to feel for this. Okay, there are some that don't have ratings. Season four here, 
15, 16, 17. Oh man, joining these data, these data sets together is gonna to be harder than we thought. Thinking of whether there's some easy way to manage this. Uh, so first of all, let's, let, let's take a quick look at this. What's going on here? Uh, if I do filter season equals four, we have is one, three, five. All right, that's on one. And then if I do ratings, they end up as one, two, three. This thinks there's a 14 episode season. The ratings think there's a 14 episode season and the transcripts, and here I'm gonna throw in, uh, one second, let me throw in title, episode name it's called here. And then here. All right, so like, we think this thinks there's 14, Aha, aha, okay. You know, if I get rid of parts one and two, I probably get a lot better on joining on the titles. Ah, because these aren't really part one and two episodes, are they? Okay, here's what I'm gonna try. So you see, I'm trying to join these two data sets. You have to do this carefully before you do anything exciting. Uh, what we're gonna do is say episode name is string it was in the transcripts. We have a string remove. String remove from episode name, space, anything like this. Just remove it. And now ask: Are there any that aren't in the ratings? Uh, oh, by uh, by episode. All right, and some of them are going to be, man, oh, oops, uh, do I create a shrewd? Oh, right, it has to be part, I just realized this needs to be like part, okay. Uh, I, see, like I don't get, oh, it's, it's um, capitalization. Is it standardization is a problem here. Uh, and we have is like, guys, okay, what I'm gonna do is say, could string, okay, I'm gonna have to standardize both of them. It's a little bit lame. Uh, name is string remove, string to lower. All, I'm gonna remove that. I'm also gonna remove periods. I'm doing a little bit of stuff here where it's like, uh, I'm removing periods, I'm removing, um, I'm making it lowercase, and here we go, we're doing, and I'm doing the same thing to the ratings. And now I'm doing it by name. All right, and some of them are still, are like still off. I could keep getting, I could try and get the last 10. Uh, this is probably a punctuation thing, um, but let me see. And I uh, really do wonder, what is the, if I flip these two, I put this here. And what if I flip these two? Ah, it's the part. All right. These are tr these are ratings. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to rem rem what I'll do is this from the ratings. I'll remove the parts. I'm doing quite a complicated little regular expression here, but it's actually just saying I want to say part. Uh, remove any of those. And then I actually am going to do something. We're going to say, take my ratings, group by, so this will mean some will have multiple. And what I'm going to do is, uh, 
like the ones that have two parts. So what I'm actually gonna do is group by name, summarize average, uh, summarize IMDb rating equals mean of IMDb, average across the parts. All right, we got pretty close, whatever. There's punctuation issues uh, here now. Uh, what if I, ah, I'm, I'm gonna stop trying. It's fine. The, um, uh, I could join the last six, but it's, it's a small fraction. Uh, what I, but the reason I need to join these is that now they're, they're like not counting them as, as multiple episodes. Okay, uh, I didn't need to do that. And now I'm gonna do an inner join on the office Transcript, all right, yeah. Ratings summarized. Here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Now, all right, office trip. Take our office transcripts. Okay. As I said, we can count our characters and the name, the episode name. Why did I say name? Name is lame. But I'm kind of left on it. All right. So the idea is now I have our name, uh, and just thinking I've counted our, our we've counted our characters, group by character, filter. I don't know. N is greater than a hundred. That's a hundred separate characters. Some N is greater than a hundred. Okay. Now I get thirty. I just saying quick to get to say okay. There are thirty characters now. Uh, that I'm looking at, and I want to know. All right, a couple things we can try. We can try here. Uh, one is I say, um, what is the average rating of a character in an episode? I'll do an inner join on ratings summarized by character. Oops, by name. Ratings summarized by name. I got there eventually. And now I do a summarize, uh, I'm still grouped by character from up here, and I say average, what is the average rating of each character? The, now, this is going to be confounded by factors like when the character was introduced, uh, and we're going to get to that in a minute, but I just want to start with the simplest. What's the average rating of an epi of uh, uh, the episodes that a character is in, that, that a particular character is in? Number of rating, I bet you Andy's going to be pretty, this is in at all. Uh, that is, I think Andy is going to be pretty high, uh, simply because um, he was introduced in the third season when these were peaking. Eh, but he also was even bigger character down here. Okay, I'm going to find. I'm going to see, and 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 there's the number of episodes that the character was in. Now the 31 characters. Okay, here we go. Character lines ratings. It's a complicated data set that includes the character, the name, the and then the rating of that, the name of the episode, and the rating of that episode. Here's the character line ratings. All right. So, ah, the best, the quote, best character. Actually, this, this lines up for me. There's a character, Charles, that's uh, Charles Minor, played by Idris Elba, who's in only six episodes, a four-episode arc in uh, season episode he's in well, he's in a number of episodes in season uh um uh four, uh, five that are really popular um and then uh in the season five finale i think he's yeah i think he's basically in yeah not a ton of uh here he's like where is he but these two episodes are two of those he nope that's season four yeah here he is he goes from new boss over here. Basically, he's only in these episodes, not at anything lower. So that's why it is very high. Karen is only is really only a, uh, is only a character in season uh, three. Uh, so the um, and season three is one of the most popular. So that explains why Karen is popular. Holly is just uh, in a couple of the, a lot of the best episodes of the show, uh, as well as being a popular character. Uh, Jan was more a character in the, these seasons. So there's a mix of popular characters and characters who were around only for a very specific 
set of episodes. Uh, who are the the characters that have the lowest average rating? I bet they're the ones that are in uh, almost every episode, like Dwight. Ah, uh, no, D'Angelo. Okay, so D'Angelo is, is played by Will Ferrell. is only in two episodes, and they're not very good ones. Uh, that is a mistake on terms of he just happens to have more than 100 lines total. Uh, so I'm actually going to say you must be in at least three episodes. That's a, I'll say you have at least 50 lines in at least five. I don't know. I'm not trying to hack the results, but I really do want like to count those characters. Brian and who is this? What is this about? I don't know. Uh, who's in five? But yeah, like, um, yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to do is say like, who's Brian? Um, no recollection of this. Uh, all right. So what we see then is like, there are some characters um, in a handful of episodes that are very popular, and then some, Robert California is only in season eight, um, and, uh, yeah, these, these are characters that are introduced near the end of the show, and that explains why, uh, and this is actually an exception, Todd Packer, uh, I never liked Todd Packer's character, and he, but he appears across the entire, uh, across a lot of episodes across the entire series, uh, and that actually might be meaningful that he, that that if he's in an episode, it gets a little bit lo lower of a rating. Um, so that's why we probably want, in some sense, control for the um, control for the uh, the the season that you're in. All right. So how are we going to do that? What I'm going to do is do a uh, is try doing a machine learning model to predict the the rating of an episode based on factors such as how many lines each character has, the season, and the um what am I uh what am I going to do the um uh the director and writer. Okay. So what I'll do is say take our transcripts distinct name director writer Got to look for that a second. Uh, I need to separate rows So here's what I'm going to do. It looks like there's some that have multiple writers. I want to give each of them a credit. Not a lot that have multiple writers, but some, some. Uh, oops, it was direct, director, director. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, I've done this before, gather my, I have did this I think even in, um, in uh, my screencast before, is I'm going to be doing a generalized linear regression, a lasso regression model. Uh, I'm really excited to say uh, what directors push it upwards, what directors push it downward. Do that, I've got to gather the type and the value of director and writer. Unite type and value into one called feature. So director and sep equals this. But before I do that, I want to separate rows. Um, I want to separate the value, I want to separate out these um, these semicolons. I want to say sep, so separate rows, uh, sep equals semicolon. Uh, I did a lot right there. What did I do? What I want to do is make sure there aren't any semicolons. Rather, they are multiple. They are counted multiple times as multiple separate writers. So yeah, every writer now gets their own line. Anything weird? Any empty strings? Anything else? No, this is generally kind of working. All right, last thing I'm going to do, so this is, these are my feature, my director features. Or my director and writer features. Okay, and uh, what I also need, what I also would need from this is to have the, um, is to have director, writer, the uh, season in, in there. Oh, so is the, well, first the text. I mentioned text. Yeah. Transcript words. Here I had only certain characters. No, yeah. What I want, oh, that's right. I want to use the character lines. So if I do this, I'm actually going to, let me see. Yeah. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna now yeah, this is pretty good. I'm gonna use the character line ratings. All right. What I want to do is keep the um, oh, and I forgot to filter out the blacklist characters. Remember how we did that earlier? How that that was pretty good. 
uh, what I said is say uh, filter not character in blacklist characters. And I say, okay, there are 39 characters and take these radii. And what I'll do is now, um, now I have the number of times each of these uh, appeared. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do, so I've got, the, uh, what I'm doing is I'm tidying together these features. Every one of these is a feature. Um, though I might want to add count filter and greater than or equal to three. Say I only want to say keep ones that have at least three, appear at least three times. Uh, oh, add count feature. Only keep only the ones that appear at least the directors and the writers that appear at least three times. Otherwise, we probably don't have enough like stats to we don't have enough data to use them. Okay, so that's like step one. Then I'll say take our character lines, uh, and we have our name and the, the feature and the Feature is the character and the number of lines. Name feature equals character value equals n. What this is is our is our character line features. I'm really trying to I'm uh I'm trying to combine these together to get something um interpretable. You might have seen me do a lot of these um lasso regressions before. And finally, what I'm gonna do is add the, um, let's see, yes, I wanna add the season. I need to add it as a dummy variable. Uh, that is, I wanna have a separate number for every, uh, I wanna have a separate number for each season as a group. So then we have like a season effect overall. Uh, that will try and help remove, uh, that, that'll handle the change in time, but also kind of handle the nonlinearity where uh, it goes up, then goes down. So what I'm going to do is add season features. And what I'll say is office ratings, select the distinct, because there's actually multiple, name and season. And then, I did it, yeah. And then transmute name feature equals as character of season value equals one. I'm gonna change this a little bit. I'm gonna do a group by feature, filter this. What am I doing here? I'm trying to make all three of these line up to be, um, uh, to have the same shape. Bind row, and I'm gonna call it paste Season, and now I'm going to combine these three together. Combine director writer features, character line features, season features. Now they're still grouped by feature. What are they? What are they currently looking like? Uh, all right, yeah. So what we have then is is the. Oops. Character line features, yes. So then this is how many lines, so then each one of these will be will be like a term for, oh, I'm actually gonna change this, I'm gonna log of n, log two, let's make it. Uh, so I can say if, if they, because I suspect the distribution of character lines is gonna be log norm, uh, is gonna be log normal. Yeah, it definitely is. See, like they're stretched out kind of like this. This is the number of lines each character has in each episode. Uh, log is going to be a little more normal, even though we have with this this sketch where some people have only one or two or three lines. Uh, but yeah, we're going to say like use the log of the number of lines they have. Use the um. Here we go. Character lines ratings. Transmute. That's what I was looking for. Name, feature this. Oh yeah, ungroup this. Ugh. Character line ratings is still grouped. Lamb. 
I shouldn't have left things grouped. I'm really having a fun time here. I'm out of practice with my screencasts. Here we go. Uh, what we say then is we have our features in terms of season one, season two, and so on. And now we can say, here's all of our um, most common features. Here's all of our features. Okay. So, now that I have this, what um, what features are predictive of quality? How can I um, how can I answer that? We could say the um, uh, what we can do is we can take uh, features. Tidy text has cast sparse, uh, and we'll say every row is one episode, one name. Every column is one feature, and we're casting the value. So now we have a sparse matrix in terms of here's how many, uh, oh, do we run every one of these? Now we have a, oop, that's not gonna work. Uh, now we have a sparse matrix in terms of like, uh, how many times does this character have a line? Is this, is this person the director? What season is it? Is a dummy variable. Um, and now that I've done that, we can say episode feature matrix. Should be 192. I thought there were fewer than that. There, there were fewer than that. Ah, uh, the fee, the the episodes and the um, the one problem is that the, uh, the episodes and the the they, they don't end up lining up. Ugh, ugh. Uh, the there are some that have um that have different episode names between each of them. I'm not joining them, so it's 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 ending up being a problem. I. What am I going to do about that? I'm going to add one last step. I'm going to say anti-join the office transcripts. Oh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take our features. I'm going to semi-join it with the office ratings. Yes, this is a, vi this is a very messy uh, and the office transcripts. This is a very messy uh, feature clean process. I, had, I think the tidy models package has some better approaches that I hadn't bothered using. Okay, we're using 80, 87 features to predict 178 uh, ratings. What are those ratings? Well, they're um, let's see. We have there there we can get these out of the out of the um, office ratings summarized. Office summer ratings. We can get them out out of the ratings summarized. IMDb rating. This is the biggest hack we're doing here. Is we need to say ratings summarized. Na uh, match the row names of this to the episode to the episode feature names. So these are the ratings lined up with the episode feature matrix. So for example, actually it would end up being basically the same uh, order. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first unpopular episode and so on ends on a, ends on a strong episode. Uh, all right. So that, that's how we had, um, we order these. Now we can, we, now that I have my sparse matrix, my vector of ratings. Uh, and again, usually these days for machine learning, uh, I bet Julia Silge is going to make a, an amazing screencast that does this prediction in a much better way. I'm just doing this to get something quick and interpretable. Oh, using the tidy models package, I'm doing something quick and interpretable. Um, just just uh, off off the top of my head, I'm going to use the GLM net package to use the episode feature matrix to predict the ratings. And I'm going to I'm going to do it with uh, cross validation. So here's my cross-validated model. This, all right, now I've done lasso regression and a lot of previous ones. You can see my board games screencast or you can see my um, uh, yeah, board game prediction screencast or my wine rating prediction screencast. Uh, we've done a lot of these before, but I'll explain quickly what this is. This is showing, uh, if I just did linear regression, how well would it do? And then as I start adding a lambda penalty term that causes the coefficients to be smaller, to, reg to be regularized, uh, to not allow large coefficients, 
um, how much better does the prediction get? And the answer is it gets a lot better. Um, it gets better, it, like as we add, uh, it, it gets better down to about this optimum. Maybe I wanna go all the way here. Uh, how can I then interpret this? I can use the broom package. How can I say, what are the coefficients? I can say, I want to tidy the GLM net fit. And what I can see then uh, for starters is that Michael being in, the more lines Michael has, like this is the first coefficient added. The more lines Michael has, the higher the episode's rating. That's mostly I think that season eight and nine don't have them. Um, but the, uh, what was I? Yes, uh, but that's um, if we if we tie, if we say, okay, uh, look at the first few steps. How do I pick a lambda? This is a very high penalty value that removes all the coefficients. How do I pick a lambda? I say filter lambda is equal to our model lambda. Let's do, let's be, go for this minimum. Let's do one, one standard deviation. I'm doing a, a stricter lambda. One standard error from the bottom. Okay, so what this then shows is here are the things that have a positive or a negative impact on the uh, on the rating, uh, even after our regularization. So what I'd say is use uh, will filter. We'll also say term is not equal to intercept. Intercept is not that interesting here. Everything starts at an eight or whatever, and we'll say term. We'll create a graph term estimate geom point cord flip mutate term equals FCT. I've just done graphs like this so often that I know that what I want, oop, there's parentheses around intercept. All right, this shows what has a positive or negative impact on the rating. And that's actually, this. so this is a very interpretive. We could say estimated effect on the rating of an episode. You know, I can do, uh, instead of a geom point, a geom call, and a fill equals, is it greater than zero? Yep. And then throw in a few other things, throw in a theme legend, remove the legend, and do a, oh yeah, just remove the legend. And one thing is I did a code flip here, I switch this here, here it is. All right. So what does this show? Something being in season eight makes the uh, makes uh, the um, the uh, the rating 0.2 lower. We saw that in the general trend. Season one also a little bit lower, uh, but and there's a big bonus here written by by series creator Greg Daniels. He wrote a lot of the most I think a lot of the big finales things like that. Um, the more lines Jim has, uh, Paul Lieberston, who also plays the character Toby, has an, a positive impact. Uh, more lines Michael and Angela have. Holly has a positive impact, but smaller than I would have expected. Um, that's interesting. What if I what if I say um, so? This is a very conservative model. It's trying to to winnow this this set of things that improve an episode down to as small a set as possible. I make a small change, and I use a less conservative estimate. This is, I think, at the very least, this is more fun is to say we get more interpretable things even if some of them might kind of be due to noise so who are the best directors steve uh steve carell tucker gates uh best writers bj novak more lines jim has is good um jim kathy's a popular character helen i think is pam's mother who's in a few popular episodes especially in season five um and Yep, there are negative characters. I would have suspected Todd Packer is not a great character. Um, season six is below average. Uh, Rain, Rain Wilson's director. We see some uh, some things. What episodes did Allison Silverman write? Uh, not to no one on one on one. Oh, I bet it's I bet it's later season ones. Um, yeah, so ratings summarized. Oh no no, let's look at Office ratings filter. Oh no, it's not. Ah, it's hard to do these things. Uh, it's hard to do this because the ratings are in different things than a different data set than the uh, transcripts. But the idea is we get to see like um, 
But yeah, I really do like regularized linear models because this, um, some of this is probably, is probably noise, but it's generally showing uh, all things, all uh, controlling for other confounding factors like the season, what has a positive impact, what has a negative impact on, um, on an episode's uh, uh, popularity. Um, that's pretty, I think, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So the, uh, yeah, we see some writers and directors in the bottom as well, so some near the top. Seasons three, five, six, eight, one are the ones that pop out as being unusually above or below uh, the, they have a usual song like time effect. That's pretty, that's um, uh, really overall pretty cool. More lines from Jim. And, and Kathy episodes are, are popular. Kathy was uh, Michael's girlfriend in season two, I think. Season two and three, two and three. Okay. All right, so that was some machine learning on, um, again, if, if, you want, if you're really interested in GLMnet and you want to see more, try out the, the um, board games data set or the wine ratings data set. Both of those use text uh, classification, text uh, predict regression. Um, no, they're not both task regression, but they both use regularized lasso regression uh, uh, to build predictive models. And uh, yeah, we really we really learned a lot today. Uh, we saw um, the ratings of episodes over time. We saw the um, so the ratings of episodes over time. We saw some of the most popular, least popular. We saw the each character's signature based on TFIDF. Character word pairs. What words did each character use the most? Uh, yeah, I feel like um we learned a lot about one of really my favorite comedies. Okay, uh, that's all the time we have. I hope you had a great time. I certainly did. See you next time.